Welcome to Max ECU Training Part 16. This video, we're going to be taking a look at working with and tuning our main volumetric efficiency fuel table. We're going to be breaking down how the main fuel table calculates the injector pulse width as we're going in and calibrating it. We're going to be looking at all the various aspects of programming and control. We're also going to be taking a look at how we can do breakpoint rescaling within the main fuel table so that we have adequate resolution when we're in vacuum and in boost if we're in a force induction application. We're also going to be taking a look at other details as far as editing our calibration table and importing our data. There's going to be a lot to cover. Let's jump into our video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look and talking about our main fuel table tuning within our MAX ECUs. Our main fuel tables are going to be what's known as a volumetric efficiency fuel strategy. We have a lot of airflow and fuel modeling going on within our MAX ECU. We want to make sure as we're calibrating and working with our main VE table that we're entering in proper values. So that means we need to understand the fundamentals as we're going through and doing our fuel table calibrating and tuning. I'm going to break down in the beginning of this video, taking a look at the fundamentals. We'll take a look at how to edit and work with our table. It's actually relatively simple to calibrate and tune. And then we're going to be taking a look at what happens if we have incorrect volumetric efficiency data and what may be the cause of having to enter in those incorrect volumetric efficiency, efficiency amounts within the table. Well, let's go in here and take a look under ECU tuning. We're going to move down here in our list under tuning. Now we have both fuel table and lambda table here. Both of these are used in a true volumetric efficiency style fuel calculation. And we find that we have to establish both a VE value and a lambda value that we want to run at. And that will figure out and determine what the injector pulse width should be delivered to our engine. Now there's gonna be a lot more going on to our modeling than that, but that's gonna be the basis or the beginning of how things are calculated. Let's jump back in here and talk about our main VE fuel table. We'll find this table is three-dimensional as we're finding here. It has an axis based on our map pressure. This can be changed something other than map pressure we'll talk about in some other videos coming up in the training course. We also have engine RPM here. So the combination between our map pressure coming from our manifold pressure sensor here and our engine RPM will give us to the position within the table. So where I'm at right now, we can find I have this cross hatch within the table. This is going to be our idle conditions. At idle right now, we can see that I'm roughly 800 RPM and my map pressure showing roughly negative 7.4 PSI. This is gonna be typical idle area. We find our volumetric efficiency values as we see the values within the cell points in the table. This is showing roughly 46% volumetric efficiency. And this is approximate what you should see at idle conditions. Anywhere between 40 to 50% volumetric efficiency is going to be accurate. Now in this case, I'm representing how much cylinder filling I have going on with the engine. This table here is going to be a way that we can translate the amount of volume flow of air that's entering the engine that we're working with. And we'll find that if we move throughout the table here, if our map pressure changes, our engine speed changes, we need to have various different points as we're seeing these values are moving around as we're driving through the table, if we're moving through the table, that's going to be telling the max that we have more or less air coming into the engine. And as a result of more or less air, we need to increase or decrease the injector pulse width accordingly so we deliver the proper amount of fuel as the engine's running and we have a good, good engine response and we have good power and everything's going to be safe. Now, there is going to be a bit more to this than just looking at our values moving up or down. There aren't going to be arbitrary amounts. They are going to be, again, representing the amount of cylinder filling. So when we're looking at our volumetric efficiency table here, this is going to be a volume flow. It's actually going to be showing an estimated volume flow of air entering the engine. Now, if we're dealing with an OEM vehicle that's fitted with a mass airflow sensor, it's very common. A mass airflow sensor will actually tell the PCM how much airflow is coming into the engine. It directly measures that. Now, when we're dealing with a volumetric efficiency strategy in a speed density orientation like this, so speed density means that we have both a map pressure sensor and engine RPM, and it's going to be uh, giving us a point of operation in the table. The speed density volumetric efficiency calculation, this is an estimation of airflow. A mass airflow is directly measuring the airflow. Our speed density VE is going to be estimating it. Now, it's our job in calibrating this table that we have the proper estimation of airflow or our VE values represented here. And we'll find our VE style fuel tuning is going to be allowing us to standardize the fuel tuning across any kind of engine. Doesn't matter the number of cylinders, the displacement of the engine, if it's going to be a two stroke, four stroke, or a rotary engine, 
they all will tune the same as far as the values that we should have here in the table, whether it's going to be at idle here or part throttle or wide open throttle. So we'll find, again, this is going to be simplifying everything, but this is not going to be a fuel table in the sense that it's going to be representative of a fuel value. This is representative of a volume flow of airflow, of estimation of airflow. And then the max is figuring out what to do with that information and turning that into an injector pulse width. So let's break this down a little bit further. Now what we have going on here is actual equation that underlines how this all is going to interface and how the calculations are being performed. And it's important we understand the equation so we understand when we're programming what to expect and how we're gonna be working with this. The equation is going to be fuel mass is equal to air mass divided by target lambda. Now in this case, this is going to be our air mass or represent our air mass within the table here. Specifically, our VE table represents the volume flow of air. Now we're gonna have the mass of a substance or air mass as we're talking about this looking at our table. Mass is equal to volume. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here, and you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.